Uh, you know very well from the previous discussion that plants are consisting of two main parts, root system, which is growing downward, and the shoot system grows upward. Uh, the most important parts, which is carried by on the, on the stem body, which are the leaves, the fruit, the flowers, buds, and terminal bud. Flower exactly is the small, sometimes at the beginning, and when they are growing up, they produce very important parts which help them in order to reproduce. After all, the flower is considered as the reproductive organ of the plant. Uh, flowers, some of them color red, some of them color uh, purple, some of them color yellow. The color of the petals responsible to attract insects. Later on, we are going to learn that from the most important parts, to allow the reproduction process takes place inside the plant is to have two different parts of reproduction, males and females. That's why this process is called sexual reproduction in other plants. So, flower is considered the reproductive organ of the plant. Also, Now let's watch this video, which is supplying very important information about your valuable lesson today. Different types of asexual reproduction in plants. But is there any other method of reproduction adopted by plants? Yes, there is. We know that some plants are capable of sexual reproduction as well. Do plants possess any special features for this? Yes, they do. Plants possess flowers. Flowers are the reproductive structure of the plant. In a flower, the male sex organ is called the stamen and the female sex organ is called the pistil. But how does this process of sexual reproduction occur? Let's try and understand it. But before that, let's have a look at the typical structure of a flower. It appears somewhat like this. A flower has mainly two components. Now what do we mean by this? Every flower is mainly composed of two parts. They are the essential and the non-essential parts. Do we know what these are? The parts of a flower such as the stamen and the pistil, which are the reproductive parts, are the essential parts. Their function says it all. These are essential because they are directly involved in the process of reproduction. Do we mean that if these structures are not present, then a plant will not be able to reproduce? Yes, that's absolutely correct. So how will the plant be able to reproduce if the gamete producing structures are not present? And what are the other parts then? Floral parts such as the petals and sepals are the next in our list and they are the non-essential parts of a flower. These floral parts do not take part in the process of reproduction directly and are therefore called the non-essential parts. Now let's discuss each part in detail. To begin with, we have the stamen which is the male part. What does the stamen look like? If we zoom in the structure, it looks like this. Stamen has two distinct parts, the anther and the filament. Do you think that these structures have specific functions to perform? Yes, as a matter of fact, they do. The part called the anther bears minute round bodies called pollen grains which play an active role in reproduction. There is a specific process by which pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the female part of the same or different flower. Now, what is that part called? For that, we need to focus on our next floral part, the pistil, which is the female part. The pistil has three distinct subparts. And what are these subparts? They are the stigma, style and the ovary. Do these structures have specific functions? Yes, they do. The part called stigma is the landing place for the pollen. And what exactly do we mean by this? Pollen from the male part, the anther, land on the stigma and germinate further. 
This process is what we call pollination in plants. Next comes the style, which is a slender stalk that holds up the stigma in position and connects it with the ovary. What about the ovary then? It is the swollen basal part of the pistil which contains the ovules. But what are ovules and what is their function? Ovules are the female gametes that get fertilized and form the embryo. Is this process really so simple? Well, it's not as simple as it seems. The process is quite complicated. This was just an overview. Let us get into more details of the process of fertilization in the next video. Thank you. 